I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and if you've been following me for a while, it's probably easy to guess which of these smartphones I'd buy. My initial impulse is just to say, hey, if you want the best Samsung has to offer, buy the Note 4. But the Galaxy S5 is a flagship too, and there are things it can do better, or at least better for you, depending on your own tastes and needs. Let's see what that means. Join us for Galaxy Note 4 versus Galaxy S5. While these phones are technically part of the same generation, or at least part of the same release year, and each one bears the same visual language, the differences in build are actually quite striking. The Galaxy S5 is the more comfortable of the two for my mid-sized hands, with rounded pillowy corners and a manageable footprint. It's also by far the cheaper feeling device, though. Its chrome-plated mid-plate is plastic underneath, and the prominent dimples on its back cover evoke, well, non-stylish comparisons. The leatherette of the Note 4's polycarbonate back cover might not be much better, but pretty much everything else is. Instead of a plastic frame, we've got a powder-coated aluminum magnesium border with a slick double chamfer and metal side buttons as well, giving the Note a more solid feel in the hand, though the sharp edges are admittedly a little rougher to soft skin. The Note is significantly more massive, it's got a bigger display with much higher resolution, and the glass protecting it is more robust. The Note also brings a bigger battery, more advanced health sensors, a revised fingerprint scanner, an additional microphone, and of course, the S Pen the Note line has become known for. Underneath it all, even the processor gets an upgrade. Side note, our Galaxy S5 is an AT&T unit for the US. For coverage of its Prime, Active, and Sport variants, see our channel page here at Pocket Now. For this comparison, we're looking at a Snapdragon 805 in the Note versus a Snapdragon 801 in the S5, with half again as much RAM in the larger phone, but slightly less usable storage space. Here's the big advantage for the smaller S5. It's rated to IP67 for water and dust resistance, making it the better phone for you if you spend a lot of time at the sawmill or on a boat. It also explains the S5's hatch cover down below, which covers up a more substantial USB 3.0 port versus the Note 4's 2.0 version. So if you use your phone as a surrogate flash drive and pass a lot of data via cable, that's a consideration. We've gone over Samsung's Android UI quite a few times this year, and if you've got a Galaxy S5, the odds are you'll eventually be upgraded to the version the Note 4 offers here, eventually being the keyword if you're using a carrier-branded variant like we are. For now, the gulf in versions lets us see what changes Samsung has made in just six months. The Note 4 leans more on lightweight, transparent design elements, while the S5 shows the company's older habit of squeezing in color wherever possible. That, combined with the refreshed magazine and multitasking views, give the Note 4 a slightly more modern feel. The Note 4's huge advantage here is obviously the S Pen I mentioned before, which brings with it a suite of specialized software. We talk a lot about the S Pen in our Note 4 review and in a dedicated S Pen lesson, so here it suffices to say that Samsung's stylus is for more than just doodling. Whether you're using it as a tool to scroll around the interface, a markup pen for correcting students, a highlighter for memorizing lines, or a device for precision photo editing, the S Pen is much more than a plastic stick. The action memos help us see the reason Samsung opted for such a high-resolution display here. Notes are still readable even in their shrunken forms, and using the revised multi-window is a little easier with the added pixels as well. Color accuracy has been improved on the Note, which you can see in any app with a predominantly white interface. That's provided you've got sharp eyes. The new floating window modes are harder to see the smaller they get. And honestly, part of me prefers the simpler dual-pane implementation of the Galaxy S5. Fortunately, you can still do that on the Note, along with the neat new tricks of dragging content back and forth, where it's supported, anyway. The Galaxy S5 makes up for its lack of floating windows somewhat with Toolbox, but really, that's just a palette of shortcuts. Any other differences from this point are just minor, and again, many of these features will almost certainly make their way to the Galaxy S5 in future updates. With a 16 megapixel camera on each device, you might think these phones evenly matched. Until, that is, you take into account the optical image stabilization, wider field of view, and revised image processing of the Note 4. While the S5's camera continues to impress me in daylight settings, it does so by tricking me, specifically the part of me that loves vibrant color. 
Shots taken with the Note 4 seem a little duller by comparison, which is disappointing in some settings, but really necessary in some others. Anywhere there's a bright blast of color in real life, especially on the red side of the spectrum, the S5 explodes it to cartoonish levels, where the Note 4 stays closer to the real world. The Note 4's optical stabilization also means low light shots are faster and much brighter. Sometimes even with software stabilization on, the S5 sensor didn't even get enough light to focus properly, which was seldom a problem for the Note 4 under the same conditions. Combine that with the Note's advanced digital zoom, its improved interface, its superior front-facing camera with panorama, and its smoother video with a wider range of options, and about the only thing the S5 camera does better is take photos underwater. Newer, better, faster. That's the story of smartphones in general, and it's the reason the newer processor in the Note 4 includes an upgraded GPU and better image signal processing. But that Note processor is also driving more pixels, so day-to-day -day performance between these two is similar. Which is to say that responsiveness on both is often great, and sometimes not so great, leaving you waiting a beat or two while the system catches up. That doesn't affect how the silicon behaves when the throttles are firewalled, though, and demanding games are no problem for either of these phones. In this sense, the higher tier guts on the Note 4 are more valuable in a future-proofing sense. If you're looking for a phone that's going to last you the full two years, well, sure, go for the 805 over the 801. A more concrete improvement is found in the speaker phone, which is throatier and bassier on the Note, making it more forgivable that Samsung has tucked it way around back again. Call quality is also better on the Note, with an added microphone helping with noise reduction and making for clearer sound on both ends of voice calls. Though, naturally, talking on the smaller S5 is more comfortable and less akin to gabbing on a tablet. The Note's form factor is always kind of a strange point when Samsung decides it's going to debut features on the Note. The weird example here is the S Health suite, which is outstanding if you're a fitness buff. And on the Note, it's even more capable with a UV detector to tell you whether sunblock is a good idea, and a blood oxygen function added to the heart rate sensor. That stuff is great, but it's odd to include it on the big, clunky, and fancy Note, and not the more compact, more rugged, and water-resistant S5. I'm not complaining, per se, it just seems like Samsung got this backwards. Finally, there's the issue of battery life, and here I'm disappointed to say we're sitting about even. With heavy use across a full day, I'm able to get to about five hours of screen on time with each device. Now, to be clear, that's not bad, and for the S5, it's even a little impressive. But on a device the Note's size, it's less impressive, and it's also inconsistent. Samsung released an endurance-improving firmware update a couple weeks ago, but here in the States, on AT&T, we're still waiting for it, as this video goes to the server. On the surface, it may seem like the only reason to get the Galaxy S5 is to save some dough, from $100 to $200 in the US, depending on your carrier and contract option. And the Note 4 is worth every strip of latinum. If you ask me, it's the best Samsung phone of the year. But it's not water resistant, and it's big, and it packs an S Pen that I really like, but which you might not find a use for. So the S5 is genuinely the better choice for some folks, and it is a good smartphone. So get the Galaxy S5 if your needs are more practical, more frugal, or your lifestyle is more rough and tumble. Get the Note 4 instead if you want the Elite, the bleeding edge, and the phone that can replace your tablet. If you want more details, we've got huge reviews for each of these devices, folks. Check them out at Pocket Now and here on YouTube. And please subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this comparison. Till next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, Captain Two Phones on Twitter, reminding you that bigger isn't always better, except when it is. We'll see you next time.